This is a first of its kind fishing show for the state of Arkansas. This year on FLW Arkansas, we take you on the water with the best anglers in the state and take the extra time to learn about what works on the waters of our natural state. It's the analysis episode brought to you by Bad Boy Mowers, fish with an attitude. Welcome to FLW Arkansas. This week we take a look deep into the waters of Lake Dardanelle, the scene of the first event of the BFL Arche Division. Several storylines emerged, most notably the weather. In mid-February, one would expect low temperatures, but not this year. We got into the 70s, which created a little guesswork for the anglers. But early in the day, Matt Wood of Jesseville found out the spot he had scouted the day before was as plentiful as he hoped. Matt was planning to fish this event as a co-angler, but when he saw what was happening at a location he found, he realized he could be in line for a nice payday and switched to the boater side. But Matt made this decision based on catching only two solid fish. It was a gamble that caused him a little stress all night long. I told my co-angler last night, uh, I said, man, I caught two fish, that's where we're going. Yeah. I said, I didn't fish there anymore. Watch some other people go over it, but they're fishing too far in, and I think that they'll be there if, if the, you know, the conditions are right and we can get there early. Well, we drew boat number seven. Yeah. So first place I went was there, and there was, I mean, probably 30% of the field come in there with me, but they, they went on back in there. Yeah. You know? And I stayed out there and. It and one thing that's interesting what you said was that most people were fishing in a little bit too close to the shore. And was it the birds that had uh, tipped you off to the fact that they were a little further out? Well, that plus uh, when I was just blowing in there, mm -hmm. I caught one before I even got up to the dock. Ah, and so okay. I thought, okay, well, they're sitting out here a little bit. Yeah. And then as I was sitting there, the birds kept trying to go down. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, well, there's shad. Well, I started watching my graph, and it's just stacked with shad down through there. Yeah. And the back back there is full of shad, but the bass aren't back there. You got there. You, you were on them. A lot of other people could tell that you were on them. There were several boats in the area, and you made sure you stayed on them. <laughs> yeah, once uh, I caught my five real quick, you know, I cold up quick, and uh, I knew that the fish were there, but I knew that we'd probably wear them out. And I got to worrying that it, in my mind, I thought, well, I can go up the bank 20 yards and catch them. But there was a guy, there was a couple of guys that were hanging out behind me, and they watched the whole thing go down. And they were about determined to come in there behind me. <laughs> and the fish had stopped biting there. But I told my co-angler, I said, you know, my luck is if he come in here and does something just a little bit different than what I'm doing, he might catch, an, you know, five more. Just enough. And I, being a one-day tournament, you got to guard it. Yeah. You had a secret weapon. <laughs> yes, two of them. Two of them. All right. One of them was your trolling motor. Oh, and then three. And okay. <laughs> what were the other two? Uh, well, number one was the Minn Kota Ultrix. Definitely. You know, I bought it last week. Uh huh. And um, a lot of money. But man, that thing is amazing because you can lock down and whenever you catch a fish and go to coal, you don't have to worry about mm -hmm. blowing back. Like this morning when I would have been trying to coal, I would have been way back there and that guy more than likely would have slid up there on me, you know? Yeah. And so I didn't have to worry about that. I was locked down. Second off was the... And, and let me interrupt you right there because on number one, he would back off when he'd catch a fish. You're back there dealing with a fish and culling and all that. And that trolling motor was working the whole time to keep him in exactly the same yeah. spot, which protected the spot. It's okay. called iPilot. That's, that's good and, stuff. Uh, when you hit that button, it locks you down there and it, it keeps you within one to two foot. And it, I mean, it, it, I, it stayed on anchor all day long. That's so, great. So I'm sure my batteries yeah. are hurting. But <laughs> and number two, what was that? The Strike King, half ounce, red eye shad, and the mm -hmm. sexy shad color. That bait really, I can throw it and fish it fast and catch fish, mm -hmm. and it lets me know where they are and get them fired up, I think. Yeah. And so that was the big thing. I gave my cone the same bait, but it was just the action. I was working it so fast. Yeah. You know, you would think there's never going to be a fish at this, but what you, what I would do was pull it to me and let it fall back, mm -hmm. and it's only a foot or two deep up there, so you grab bottom if you're not careful. And so I pull it back, and when it flutters back down, they can't, they can't stand it. I was worried back. about you getting carpal tunnel the way that you were. I That's mean, why you he were, said you're going to yeah. be reeling when you get in the truck. That's right. What was number but, three? Uh, definitely the white chatterbait. Mm -hmm. I caught three 
good fish on that one. The biggest one, the 511, come on the red eye shad. Mm -hmm. But the other two four pounders come on that white chatter bait. And I threw it yesterday and never got a bite, you know. And so I go back to the hotel last night and I'm thinking, that ought to work. And so I got to looking at it and I was throwing a full swimming yum dinger on the back of it. And these shad out here, I mean, they're pretty big. We actually mm -hmm. caught snags some today, mm -hmm. but that bait was just too long. And so last night I cut the, the skirt off of the chatter bait and pulled the, and cut the yum dinger off and made it a more compact, uh -huh. more the size they're after. Yeah. And I think that made a hundred percent difference because- That's great. They, they I mean, I, I missed a few on it, but most of them have it down the throat. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of show this is. This is about the education of the angler. We trust that tips like this will help you fish better and enjoy more of what we have all around us in Arkansas, great water. We also want to thank our friends at Bad Boy Mowers for making this possible. Some of the Bad Boy dealers from across the state will be sharing lawn care tips to help another aspect of being in the great Arkansas outdoors. Always make sure that your lawnmower blades are sharp. Cutting with dull blades can not only result in cuts in the turf, but can also lead to an uneven cut. After you're finished mowing, leave your grass clippings on your lawn. The grass clippings will begin to break down and form nitrogen and other useful nutrients for the soil. FLW Arkansas is brought to you by Superior Auto Group. Not just better, superior. And by Bad Boy Mowers. Mow with an attitude. By Costa Sunglasses. And by Certified Arkansas Bait Fish. Healthy, hardy, and safe. Log on to safebait.org and buy Intova cameras. It's a wide open, full throttle bad boy country out there. Where we deliver more mowers for every part of it, packing the power and speed that blurs the line between work and play. Where true value is measured over time, time and time again. Classic. American Muscle. Make your country bad boy country. Mo with an attitude. Hi, I'm Shani Kramer from Independence County Off-Road. Thank you for watching FLW Arkansas. Let's give you a recap of the story of the Arky Division first event. Normally when you look at a calendar and see February, you figure get your winter gear and get ready for a real estate tournament. Remember the first three rules of real estate? Location, location, location? <laughs> well, winter fish tend to group together. You find the group, you'll find a paycheck. But today it was warm, warm like April, and that meant anyone could catch them. Optimistic folks spread all over the lake. We followed some of the best. Cody Burke started slow, but found his way into a big sack of fish upriver, good enough for a second place finish. Zach Freeman went upstream for a limit and then downstream to upgrade. A winner on this lake last year, he finished in fifth place. You already heard from our winner, Matt Wood, but let's talk co-anglers. Seven anglers from the back of the boat brought in at least 10 pounds. Johnny Kreider earned $277 with this big bass of six pounds, 11 ounces. Little Rock Police Officer Herb Kimbrough took sixth place. And staying with the law enforcement theme, Parole Officer Stephen Sims caught this nice fish toward the end of the day. In all, 378 keepers were weighed in. Many more were caught and culled. We had 21 five fish limits caught, and 143 of the 222 anglers landed at least one keeper. Folks, you've been watching FLW Arkansas for a while, and I do host this show, but some of you may not know that I also serve in the Arkansas House of Representatives. And I thought it would be fun this season to feature the local legislators in the lakes that we fish. And so I've got Representative Trevor Drown with me, and Trevor Drown knows a lot about Lake Dardanelle. You've got a lot of good history on this lake. I do. That, that lake was a huge part of my life growing up. I mm -hmm. uh, fished a lot of tournaments and 
as a younger kid, just a 14 foot flat bottom with a 9.9 and a trolling motor and a friend of mine spent our summers on that lake. Probably uh, one of my fondest memories and it's a, list, a lesson to, to be told to many of the fishermen out there <laughs> that are fishing the tournaments is uh, we ran up to, uh, me and two friends ran up to uh, Spadra up at uh, mm -hmm. Clarksville yeah. and we were fishing the moss beds one day and we caught about 50 pounds of fish in hey. the moss beds. Yeah. yeah. Well, the next day we ran back up there on a tournament. Unfortunately, they had dropped the lake about a foot and we caught nothing. So. Uh, and that's Dardanelle and our anglers are experiencing that right exactly. now. We've got fluctuating water levels and really unseasonably warm weather. It's a special part of the state, that area right there. I mean, Dardanelle's so beautiful and, and everything around there. It's just, that's a great uh, place to really highlight the, the nature and the natural resources that Arkansas has. Well, it really is. I mean, we're very fortunate in the River Valley that we have that, uh, that uh, Lake Dardanelle system, and uh, it takes a special angler to come down there and uh, to compete and to succeed there. Yeah, well, and Dardanelle has tested the best, and we've uh, gotten to see that over the years uh, with a lot of big time tournaments come to Dardanelle. When they come to Arkansas, they think Dardanelle as one of the top lakes they want to go to. So that's great. Now you've also got something else going on in, uh, in your world as well. You're serving as a state representative right now, but uh, we've, we've got some news. No, oh, yes, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm running for Secretary of State and uh, it's, uh, it is uh, an interesting endeavor yeah. because it covers the whole state. Yeah. And uh, so I'm uh, very busy and uh, don't see much time uh, being spent on Lake Dardanelle. Uh, <laughs> within the next 12 months. Well, maybe after election, you can celebrate uh, with, with a good fishing trip. He's a state representative right now, and right behind us, this is the uh, the floor of the Arkansas House of Representatives. It's an honor to serve with you. Thank you, you very much you for too. joining us. Thank you. All righty. In the Arkansas legislature, whenever we take a break from normal business, we'll ask for a point of personal privilege. And this is what we're doing at this point in this show right now. This is Steve Howard. Steve and I have known each other for a long, long time, long before I got into the fishing business. I was a sportscaster at Channel 4. Steve worked with me at Channel 4. You knew me back when I didn't know yeah, diddly about yeah, what we're doing yeah, right now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you, you were a good sportscaster, but I didn't know if he was going to make the cut there. I mean, I was fishing then, you know. It was, yeah. it was a pretty big jump for you. Yeah, well, I was appreciative to have guys like Steve on board to help me make that transition. And, uh, and now, you know, here we are, and here you are right now in third place. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's early. There's still some boys out there that some guns that could have some big sacks, but it was a fun day. It wasn't, you know, wasn't real exciting. I didn't get a whole lot of bites. place. You know, but I got the right bites, a few yeah. right bites, you know, and that's key. And once you get, you know, once I got the right bites, probably by 10 o'clock I had a limit. Yeah. And then I started trying to catch some big heads. Yeah. And, you know, I finally caught one four that helped me, but, you know, I needed another one, obviously. So. Last year at the season opener at Lake Washita, we had a camera boat follow Steve, and Steve uncharacteristically did not catch a fish that day. Zero. Every time we have brought up having a camera follow Steve since then, he has made certain threats our way <laughs> that if we get any any closer than we are. So we're gonna have to have a big zoom lens, but we, after the success of today, we're gonna have to follow Steve a little bit closer here in 2017. <laughs> I, I think we come to Little Rocks. So, you know, maybe that's we'll right. work something yeah, out Little okay. Rock. You know, that's the home pond, that so is. I like it there. So. That is, that's both our homes. So. Yeah. Uh, Depending on where I'm at in the standings, if I'm not up close to the top, then y'all can probably come join me. But. Okay, it's on tape right now. We've got visual evidence. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, man. Thanks, sir. All righty. Bad Boy Mowers is making this analysis episode possible. They love fishing like we do, and they also love the outdoors, right outside of our front and back doors. Try to avoid scalping your lawn. By scalping, I mean cutting very low or mowing in an uneven area where the blade contacts the dirt and actually takes your grass away. That grass is dead, and this allows the weeds to take over where it was. FLW Arkansas is brought to you by Superior Auto Group. Not just better, superior. And by Bad Boy Mowers. Mow with an attitude. By Costa Sunglasses. And by Certified Arkansas Bait Fish. Healthy, hardy, and safe. Log on to safebait.org and by Intova Cameras.
easier ways to become a better angler. Join FLW today and take your fishing to the next level. Get the magazine, get on the water. Visit flwfishing.com slash membership to find out more. Hi, I'm Dwight Payne with Alma Tractor and Equipment. Thanks for watching FLW Arkansas. You will never have a leaderboard on Lake Dardanelle without Zach King somewhere near the top of it. And uh, Zach just weighed in a nice sack of fish, just one ounce shy of 19 pounds, took over second place. Uh, Zach, you know this lake pretty well. <laughs> yeah, I've been fishing this ever since I was uh, holding up the walk pretty much. Uh, and uh, you know, I think if I'm not mistaken, I've fished the BFLs here since 2002, and I've got wow. I've cast a check in every one of them. Yeah. So yeah, it's been good to me, but I spent a lot of time on it. And Dardanelle can be finicky, and so you've got to learn, you know, how to kind of manage it when times are tough. And this is mid-February, and we've got mm -hmm. temperatures near 70 degrees, which is crazy. Yeah. But it is. Uh, so it, it kind of throws all the normal patterns out. How mm -hmm. did you figure out how to do things today? Well, I mean, like you see today, it's you know the weights are down. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it got warm, and the water temps 57, 58 degrees. Mm -hmm. Uh, the problem I had today was is the, the lake was low for two days. It was about a foot low. Well, this yeah. morning they raised it up about a foot. Mm -hmm. So, and I was catching them on a spinnerbait real shallow. Wow. Well, and, and, it, and it cooled off. We had some cool nights. So, I mean, when we started out this morning, take, taking off, it was 40 degrees. Mm -hmm. And it cooled them off a little bit, but I went straight to where I've been catching them and I started throwing a spinnerbait knowing or knowing that they was going to change. Yeah. I knew they would. I fished this thing my whole life, but I Gave it till about 11 o'clock. And uh, I told my co-anger, I said, let's go do something different. Mm -hmm. And uh, I changed up a little bit, fished, fished kind of the same the same structure. I was fishing wood and fishing grass. And, uh, and what'd you have at 11 when you made that decision? I had nothing. Oh, really? So yeah, you were zero I had nothing. Point. And okay. uh, I picked up a half ounce rattle trap and uh, I think I probably caught 30 or 40 keepers today. <laughs> I, I, I doubled up two or three times today. Yeah. Yeah, it was, I found one spot, they was just loaded up. and. And uh, I, I bet I'll probably caught 50 there, yeah. you know, and, and half of those was keepers. And it and, just goes to show you that at Dardanelle, the fish are always there. It's yeah. just finding out how to reach them, and you went from zero to hero just like that. Yeah, I mean, it just goes anywhere in fishing, you know. Mm -hmm. You don't ever give up, yeah. you know. You have a, a bad morning like I did this morning, you know, you just kind of, I took a breather. Yeah. You know, I stopped, and I said, all right, you need to calm down. Mm -hmm. You need to calm down. You fish this lake your whole life. Just calm down. Let's talk a little bit about the mental side of fishing. You, you use the term settle down. You know, a lot of people that aren't familiar with tournament fishing, they don't know the, the role that emotions play, the decisions that you make, when do you move, when do you not move, and all that. And emotions play a big part of this. How do you settle yourself down? Well, it's hard to do. Yeah. I mean, it is. It's hard to do, but you have to make yourself do it. Mm -hmm. You have to. Because fishing, as you know, it's a humbling sport. Yeah. One day you can go out and catch 20 pounds, and the next day you go out and not get a bite. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, and, and you just have to you have to make yourself you have to make yourself slow down mm -hmm. because when you're not getting bit, the clock's ticking. Yeah. You know, yeah, you have eight hours in a day to fish, but when you're in the boat fishing a tournament, it seems like you have about 30 minutes to yeah. fish. <laughs> yeah. And. Uh, you just have to make yourself, you have to make yourself slow down. You and have the, to. And when the live well's empty, that clock ticks louder and louder and louder. And goes faster and yeah. faster and faster and faster. Yeah. There's a lot of skill in it, uh, a lot of luck, but you have to, you have to have a mental side of this game to, to play it. Well, you have better luck when you have better preparation. Nobody has prepared more, knows the lake more, and how to handle the finicky moods of Lake Dardanelle than Zach King. Zach, thanks for joining us. All right, thank you. Best of luck to yes, you. Yes, sir, thank, thank you. you. Hey, when you're mowing your grass, don't look right in front of your mower. 
Look about 10 feet out, you'll get a straighter cut. FLW Arkansas is brought to you by Superior Auto Group. Not just better, superior. And by Bad Boy Mowers, mow with an attitude. By Costa Sunglasses. And by Certified Arkansas Bait Fish, healthy, hearty, and safe. Log on to safebait.org and by Intova Cameras. It's a wide open, full throttle bad boy country out there. Where we deliver more mowers for every part of it. Packing the power and speed that blurs the line between work and play. Where true value is measured over time. Time and time again. Classic. American. Muscle. Make your country bad boy country. Mow with an attitude. I'm Paul Duvall from Russellville, Kubota. Thanks for watching FLW Arkansas. We have our tournament winner, Matt Wood, 21 pounds, two ounces on a very tough lake at Lake Dardanelle. We've also joined by tournament director, Mark McGuaw. Uh, what a day it was, because we didn't know what to expect when this day began. We had all this crazy weather, we had water levels going all over the place, and here we are in mid-February, and we're almost at 70 degrees. But you figured out how to make it happen. Yep. I got lucky, you know, just one of those days. I've said it once, I'll say it again. It was, I mean, come out here yesterday, caught two, called Mark, said I want to fish as a boater, change that up, and they were they just stayed there. I mean, it was just, it was luck. I got a, a high number, because uh, I've been talking to some guys here, and a bunch of them wanted there. Yeah. <laughs> and I seen that when I was fishing there, that they wanted there. But uh, I got boat number seven, and. I went straight there and never left. There you go. Mark, what was it like when you got that phone call? You knew, man, he must be on something to yeah, make this call. Yeah, I've known Matt a long time. We've actually been deer hunting buddies for a few years uh, <laughs> down in Jesseville. He called me this morning, we up there eating breakfast. He said, he said, hey man, he said, I don't know where your uh, camera boats are at, but you might want to get them over here. He said, I'm catching them. He said, I'm just throwing two and a half pounders back. Well, I knew it was having a special day right there, mm -hmm. you know, as soon as he called. So I got a hold of you guys, you know, in the camera boats, and you guys went over there and hopefully got some good stuff right there. Matt putting on a fish catching clinic over there. Great day, man. You know, the story of your victory has a lot of chapters in this, but technology was a big part of this win on a variety of levels. But one of those was the fact that you had a trolling motor that helped you maintain that spot and protect that that spot all day long. Yep. I've got to give it to the Minn Kota Old Tricks. You know, I, I, I've been pricing them and looking at them for a couple weeks. I'd actually looked at buying one when they first come out, but I was like, I just can't see myself paying that much money. And then the more I start watching these videos, more guys are starting to use them. You know, it, it's a game changer and that is a game changer. You know, it's the electronic power steering and the iPilot combined into a, a foot drive with the cable and it can collapse into the boat and it's not electronic pick up and pick down, which is a problem for a lot of guys. And so I, I bought it last week, put it on. First time I fished, I won it. So it paid for itself on his first tournament. <laughs> it, it did do that. And uh, I will have to say that if it wasn't for that, I'm not saying I wouldn't have won, but it would have been harder because when you catch one and the wind's blowing on you and you're down there messing with the fish, you get blown back 30, 40 yards in just a second. And that would have let some of them other guys come in there. Or if not, I would have had to troll up there again to make that next cast. So when you get there and you hit spot lock, you're there. You don't have to worry about the trolling motor. I hardly have my foot on the trolling motor all day long. And uh, I'm just glad the battery's held up because I haven't really tested it on the batteries and I was worried. And I'd actually had Troy ask if I could tie up to the dock because if my batteries died, I knew I wasn't going to leave that dock either way. <laughs> yeah, and I tell you, that was a, there were several boats in the area that were watching the clinic that was being put on there. A lot of people had their eye on that spot. The fact that you were able to protect it helped ensure that you and your weight was going to be number one at the end of the day. I've got to give it to the Minn Kota for that. Yeah. 
Mark, what's it like when you see how this storyline develops? He calls with a little bit of confidence. Yeah, yeah. He, now, he told us that he had a little bit of panic. He wasn't too sure after he made that call, yeah. then he didn't catch anything for the rest of the yeah, day. Yeah, went fishing uh, yesterday, and uh, you know when he found that school of fish, he said he had uh, caught two good fish up there, and then went and fished around the rest of the lake, never had another bite the rest of the day. So counting on the one school, but uh, you know the one school held out for him. Got the W here today, so a special day for, for Matt Wood here, no yeah. doubt, fun, fun day. One of the things you can do on a one-day tournament. That's, that's, the, that, that's another factor is if it was a two or three day tournament, I would have had to really think about sitting in there and just hammering on them. I might have sat there all day just with the bottom of, and setting the bottom of the boat protected it, but I wouldn't have kept on casting. And, and that's, that's a factor in these BFL, the one day, you know, the, they got the two day at the end of the year, but the one day you're there to get the big sack for that day. And so you can do what you got to do to get as much as you can. Congratulations on a big win. All right, Mark, where are we going next? We're going to Lake Greeson uh, next month. We'll be there in March. Uh, it's going to be another great event. You know, granted, we can, you know, stay on this warming trend. Yeah. Lake Greeson, everybody knows the fish is there just full of keeper bass. You know, it's not really popular for going and catching giant bags of fish, but it should be a good tournament. Lots of anglers are going to catch lots of fish. We're going to see lots of limits. You know, in the seven, eight, nine, ten pound range, I'm going to guess right now to win that tournament on the boater side, probably a 15, 16 pound limit will probably win that tournament. But, but again, lots of numbers there. It's going to be a going to be a good good tournament. We haven't been there several years, and you know, in the BFL trail, if ever, I don't remember ever going there. Yeah. But it's going to be a fun time. Changing the schedule up a little bit, and we'll see what happens. Should be good. You can follow along on FLWfishing.com if you want to join us and participate in the tournament as a boater or a co-angler. Come on down. We'd love to see you and we thank you for watching this episode of FLW Arkansas. Here's a look at the leaderboard. Matt Wood of Jesseville, paycheck of just over $4,000. Cody Burke out of Bryant in second place, followed by Zach King, who was always on the leaderboard at Dardanelle. Steve Howard of Little Rock finished in fourth and Zach Freeman finished in fifth. The co-anglers are the most versatile bunch in the tournament. They adjust on the fly, depending on what the boater does, but we had some strong fish in the back of the boat. Johnny Kreider turned in first place with 16 pounds, 10 ounces, also, of course, getting that big bass you saw earlier in the show. Jason Waddell of Lowell, $1,011. Brian Choate of Conway finished in third. Jim Cummings of Murfreesboro in fourth in a tie with Kevin Clark of Malvern. Your big bass leaderboard, Randall Clark with a seven pound, one ounce fish worth $555 on the boater side. And Johnny Kreider, here's a look again at that six pound, 11 ounce bass out of the back of the boat. We thank you for watching and we thank Bad Boy Mowers for sponsoring this episode. All season long, we'll bring you analysis from the best anglers on the water to help you fish better and enjoy the outdoors. You can thank Bad Boy Mowers yourself by taking a look at how they can make your life and your yard a little more effective and a little more fun. Mow with an attitude.